Just let your voice out. There's no one here but us and Jesus, and we have come to praise Him, to worship Him from the very deep of our being. And because Jesus is in this house, anything can happen. Anything is possible in the presence of the Lord. Last night, I read to you a verse of scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 29 and 29. I want to reread that here again tonight. Here in Deuteronomy 29 and 29, it says the secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. In other words, what we experienced here last night, the healings, the miracles, that belongs to us forever. It is our possession, and we will build on it. How many of you believe that even greater things is possible tonight? These things belong to us and to our children forever. Again, lift your hands, your voices to the Lord, and pray that God will do with you here tonight exactly what he wants to do with you. That there'll be revelation, understanding here upon every individual. Lord Jesus, tonight, by the authority of the word of God, by the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let there be revelation and understanding come upon everyone within the sound of my voice, that you will reach them, Barasha Toravaka, you will reach them, O oh God, with your own voice, that you will impart to them, O oh God, the power of a believer tonight as never before, that something will explode in each of us, that we will come to grips with who we are as believers, and that the deep things of God belong to us, and that we will see more and more, because tonight we hear the sound of abundance of rain. We are living in the latter rain. God, tonight, let that rain pour here. Let it splash upon us. Let something happen here that will change us forever. Jesus, you are about to come. We worship you. We praise you. We shout the victory in the name of Jesus. One more time, would you just clap with all of your might and would you just shout the victory in the presence of God that we have in God, oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I want to commend you wonderful people for the way as believers you ministered and imparted to each other here last night. As I walked among you, it was amazing because you were transmitting all the faith that was needed to get done exactly what needed to be done. You are a powerful people. We are a powerful people. We are a very unusual people. We are a mysterious people to this world because we are the children of God. We belong belong to him. He belongs to us. We don't just know about him. We know him. He is alive inside of us. And that's why we clap. And that's why we shout. And that's why we jump. And that's why we dance. Because he's like a fire shut up up in our bones and if you're visiting here tonight and you get what we've got a hold of you're going to act just like it you can see oh no but i'm telling you oh yes there's nothing you can do about it if you're visiting the safest thing you can do is to act just like us because if you don't we know you're visiting and we'll go after you if you want to get free tonight you need to just absolutely act just like it so now visitor saint alike people Clap your hands again and just worship the Lord because Jesus is in this.
Years ago, when Brother Libby first went to Gaithersburg, Maryland, you may be seated. Thank you for standing so long. There was a tremendous revival that broke out there at that time. One night, while they were in the middle of worship, firemen came running through the back doors and said, where is the fire? And Brother Libby said, what are you talking about? He said, neighbors have called us and told us there are flames of fire jumping out of the roof of this building. There was no literal fire. It was the fire of the Holy Ghost. I feel that kind of fire is, fire is here among you people here tonight. If you could see what's going on. Oh. I happened to be in a service in Rensselaer, New York, many years ago. We were having a tremendous service. We had no air conditioning. The windows were open to get fresh air into the building over in Rensselaer, New York. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the altar service, the back doors opened and two cops came in. And they, we went back to see what was going on. The people in the altar didn't see them. They had their backs to them. But we went to the back to talk with them. And they said, we want this thing shut down. About that time, one of the dear sisters up front, the power of God hit her. She threw her hands in the air, burst out speaking with tongues and fell out. I said to them, that woman, she's under the power of God. I wouldn't touch her for anything in this world. If you want this stop, you go do it. <laughs> they both turned and walked out. <laughs> Last we heard of them. Clap your hands again. People, we've got a hold of something that this world needs so desperately. I don't think I have the energy tonight, but I feel like jumping. I feel like shouting. I just feel like dancing. There's something glorious here tonight. There's a fresh wave here tonight. There's a fresh breath of the Almighty. If you can breathe that in, just do it in your own way here tonight. Clap again and just let your voice out as we talk about the great things of... God. I preached for Brother James Kilgore in Houston, Texas for about 30 years straight. One night at the end of the altar service, the place was about 12 or 1,500 people there that night. Uh, I had working among the people and the people had their hands in there. They're worshiping. There was a photographer in that particular audience and he was standing over here with a camera and he took a, a cross view shot of the whole congregation. And uh, I kept on praying and people kept on worshiping. But all of a sudden, he came running to me. He said, Brother Stone King, look at this. I said, what? Every one of these people who had their hands in the air, there were flames of fire over their head. The camera caught what the naked eye cannot see. What was amazing to me is every individual that had their hands raised, there were flames of fire over their head. On this side, some people had gotten tired and they sit down. They weren't worshiping, but the few that were among them that had their hands raised, there were flames of fire among, above their heads. People that were sitting down, there were no flames of fire. My advice is, people, get your hands in the air. You have no idea what happens when you worship. You have no idea what takes place when you begin to enter into the presence of God. There are flames of fire here tonight. There are angels on this platform. If you could see, if the naked eye could see what's here, I feel like throwing my hands in the air and just worshiping God. Try it. Just put your hands in the air and let your voice out for this great cause. Oh. You may be seated. I know that our people work and they work hard during the week on various kinds of jobs. I understand that. 
When you come to church, some people are really weary, and they have fought different spirits through the day, spirits of the forces of darkness, human spirits, etc. And I understand all of that. But when you come to the house of God, even if you are tired, and you're too tired to get your hands in the air, prop them up on the back of the pew beside you, but get your hands in the air. If you don't have pews and just folding chairs, go over to a brother or sister, whichever is appropriate, and say, look, I've had a bad day today. I'm exhausted. May I borrow your shoulder? I just want to get my hand in the air. And if you get your hand in the air, if you get enough strength to just sort of shake it, something happens. Something happens because he likes it. Try it. Just put your hands in the air. Let your voice out. Something happens when you worship him. Worship is the prerequisite to the miraculous. If you want a miracle, stop begging. Just worship him. Just worship him. You need the Holy Ghost. Don't beg for it. Worship. Worship is the prerequisite to the miraculous, I reiterate. So right now, just worship at the top of your lungs for a moment and wave your hand or shake your hand. Lord Jesus, we do this tonight for you. We are here tonight to do this for you. We have come to worship. We've come to clap. We've come to shout because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are our Savior. You're a father. You're a brother. You're a sister. You are a cleft in a rock. You are water when we are thirsty. You are drink. You are food when we are hungry. We have come to worship you. Everyone shout hallelujah. Oh. You may not know it, but the word hallelujah intricately interpreted means I give my whole being to Jehovah. Do it again if you feel that, if you understand what I just said. I was in Memphis, Tennessee, preaching a very large singles conference a number of years ago, probably about 1,500 singles in that particular meeting that year. But um, as I was ministering, I had people praying for each other. There was a balcony, and over here on the corner of that balcony, like up here, there were two women. One of them got down on her knees beside that seat up there and began to pray. <clears throat> the other woman had a camera and she just decided she'd take a photo of her friend praying, kneeling at that chair, I suppose as a souvenir or something, a nice memento from the event. And so she snapped the picture and I continued. All of a sudden she came running down those stairs. She ran straight toward me. She said, Brother Stonking, look at this. I said, what? She showed me the photo. The woman that was kneeling there was an angel in white standing over her with his right hand on that woman's back. Angels are ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation. I don't see them, but I can feel them. And there are angels here tonight because where angels are present, there's a downshifting into holiness and power. They come directly from the throne of God, which is holiness and power. You can tell when angels come in, everything changes. 
and they desire to look into this. There is never a service in this church where a man of God preaching in this particular podium, this pulpit, but what angels are present because they desire to look into it. Because angels know, they were there at creation, they know that when God speaks, his word goes forth, creation results. They know when a man of God preaches the word of God, when the word of God is spoken, they know that something happens and they want to be involved with it. And if you can see them, and I've had friends that do, I say, Brother Stone King, you can pray for people to get the Holy Ghost and angels will just stop and watch. They say they don't get involved, they don't understand it. They said, but the moment you begin to pray for people to be healed, they know exactly what to do, and they will walk right in and lay hands on people. He said, every person in my audience, in my particular congregation, at the altar, whenever an angel has touched them, they fall out because the power of God hits them. I told you last night, you're going to have to be open to this. There's more to this than just coming to services. There's a lot more to all of this than just what we've been taught in Sunday school classes. There's a realm of the supernatural, the moving of God and the moving of the Spirit. I don't want to just go through motions. I want to get a hold of the things of God. Somebody explain this to me. Somebody get me to Jesus. I don't understand this. I really don't. I live in an area. I live in a forest. I live at the end of a cul-de-sac. In the evenings, especially in the evening, if I'm out mowing the lawn or working the back toward the forest, there is some kind, I can feel angels. I can feel the presence of angels because over where I live, there is a, a, there's some kind of a passageway from the East Coast to the West Coast, and angels go back and forth across that particular passageway. I don't know why they do, but they do. And sometimes they come into my house, and I can feel them. I don't know why they come. I don't know if it's because of something I've prayed. I don't know if it's because someone has, has interceded for me in prayer, and an angel has come. But I can feel them, and I'm not alone when that happens. There are angels on this platform. I've been in services. Brother T.W. Barnes, I'm sure you've heard something about him. He was like a dad to me. And he mentored me for years. We were friends for 40 some years. I met him right after I got the Holy Ghost. I've been in services since he passed away in the States. And I've had men walk up to me. One man was about 50 years old. He was crying at the end of an altar service. He said, Brother Stone King. He said, I felt Brother Barnes' angel in this sanctuary tonight. I said, yes, I know. I asked for him to be here. That's who I am. That's what I am. I know these things are true. And when his angel is with me, he stands normally behind me about five feet back and over this direction. Whenever he's here, the same things that happen in that man's ministry will happen in that service that night. People, do you understand what I'm saying? We get a hold of all of these things. We can have services that will become unprecedented. If the news ever gets out of these four walls, what's really going on here, what you people have a hold of, you're not gonna hold what's coming. You'll never hold what's coming, but you've got to get involved. How many of you want to be involved with the realm of the supernatural? And shall I say the mysterious things of God? I think there's a reason why I don't see angels. I live alone. And angels can appear in the form of human beings. Well, if I walked in my house and there was an angel in the form of a human being standing in the corner, it would shake me up. If they had white wings, there's no problem. But if they just look like a human being, and I've had encounters like that. I've had, I have come into the presence of angels that appeared in the form of human beings. And at first, when I just met them or walked by them, I was just walking by. But when I got by, I realized 
It was an angel of God. And I've looked back and they were gone. When I was very young, first came into this thing, I did a lot of canvassing, a lot of door-to-door -door work. I lived in an apartment across from Drake University because I was studying commercial art at night over there and I was going to work in the daytime. But one Saturday morning, I was looking for someone to pick me up to take me to a farm where I wanted to spend the day with people in the church and the doorbell downstairs rang. So I ran down the steps and I opened the door and there was a man standing there. He was very clean, nicely dressed, Maybe he looked about 50 years of age, and he had a little, little container in his hand. I said to him, I said, may I help you, sir? He said, I'm selling shoe polish. He said, would you like to buy some? I said, what kind is it? He said, liquid. I said, no, I don't use that stuff. I use the real thing, paste. I'm like that. I don't use margarine, I use real butter. <laughs> cool whip whipped cream, real, the real thing, that's how I am. And so he just looked, he thanked me, and, and he turned and walked away. Well, I went back upstairs and I felt badly. I, I thought, I've got to do something for him. So I ran in my bedroom, <coughs> had my wallet, had a couple of dollar, one dollar bills in there. <coughs> I ran back down the stairs, and, and if, he's, if he's a salesman, but only had one little package, see. If he's a salesman, just going from door to door, I would expect him to be at the next door, or the next door. But he wasn't. He was on the sidewalk walking away. I walked after him and I had a difficult time catching up to him. But I finally got to him. When I got to him, I said, sir. He turned, I said, look, I don't want what you're selling, but I want you to have this. And I placed those two $1 bills in his hand and he just smiled and looked at me. And I didn't know what to say, so I turned and walked away. I took about 10 steps and turned around just to watch him. He was nowhere in sight. He was nowhere in sight. Nowhere. He was an angel of God that came to me. So the Bible says, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. I walked out of a bookstore in my area one night late, and there was a young man standing over here. And I, I just spoke to him, and I walked on. I was in a hurry, got in my car. I drove about a half a mile, and something, the Holy Ghost came on me, and I realized that was an angel of God. For some reason, he was there. I turned the car and went back. He was nowhere to be found. People, listen, slow down in life. Slow down and take, become aware of what's around you. Pray for a moment because there's a spirit of revelation here. There's something moving among us. There are angels here. They're watching. They're. Jesus, I worship you because you are God. Mm. God, I'm asking, let these precious people tonight see things they've never seen before. Help them to touch areas that they've never touched before and that they will be changed forever, that this church will become revolutionized into the realm of the supernatural, that the signs that are to follow believers will explode here and that this congregation will become an a whole congregation of preachers and demonstrators of the spirit and power of God. Oh Lord Jesus, I ask with all the resurrection power that is inside of me that you will hear and answer this prayer for this ministry here and this congregation. If you've heard my prayer and you would like that, you may clap, you may stand, you may do whatever you want, but give some response. <clears throat> to your acceptance of it all.
I'm only telling you what I feel to tell you tonight in the spirit, but I was at Solo Flight years ago in New Orleans, and I would go there every year and preach that conference. One night I was late uh, to getting to the first night's service, and I just um, I walked in uh, down that center aisle, and there were their backs were to me, of course, but as I walked by my way to the front, uh, there was a man standing with the, with the black suit on, and I just felt as I walked by, I wasn't walking fast, but I just felt as I walked by to reach over my right hand and just <clears throat> touch his back between the shoulders. That's all I felt. I just touched him, and I walked on. Unknown to me, he had some kind of a terrible disease. He was in some kind of pain. He was healed instantaneously when I touched him. People, if you feel to do something, do it. You don't know what could happen. You don't understand what may be involved. So anymore, I don't ask questions. Don't stand there or sit there and try to analyze it and figure it out. Because by the time you try to figure it out, you've lost the opportunity. You've got to move when the water is troubled. When the water is troubled, that's the time to get in. If God tells you to do something, get out of the sea, climb over a pew, push somebody out of the way, and go do what you feel to do. Last night, right here in this altar service, I was praying with a bunch of you, and you were praying too. There was some young man here. I don't even know what his name is. I looked at him once, and the Holy Ghost said, go pray for him. Well, I was praying with someone else, and the Holy Ghost said, go pray for him. So I went over to him, and he was standing there. I put my one hand on his back, one hand on his chest. I don't know who he was. I don't even know if he's here tonight. But I just prayed. I went at it and spoke with tongues. He was just crying and speaking with tongues. I don't know what that's all about, but it doesn't matter if I know what it's all about. God just wants something to happen. He wants to do something, and you've got the power inside of you to do it. You've got to understand me tonight. Jesus is not coming back. Angels are not going to preach this. They're not coming to demonstrate it. The, the ends of the earth, the ends of the world have come upon this generation. We are that generation. God has only your hands, your feet, your lips, your intellect, your voice. You're going to have to do something like you've never done it before. Because whether you like it or not, every one of you is a preacher. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you're baptized in Jesus' name, you're a preacher. Whether you like it or not. You've got a story to tell like no one else's story. No one has a story like your story. No one has a story like my story. And the whole world wants to hear a story. Look at the movies. Look at the things they rent. They want to see a story. They want something to lift them. Look at the libraries, the books that are written about this, that, and everything else. People want to know. They want to know. Well, listen, I've got the best story you're ever going to hear. I was lost, but now I am found. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm going to live there forever and ever. I'm going to see Jesus face to face. I'm going to see angels. I'm going to be involved with that holy city. If you've got the Holy Ghost, let the Holy Ghost just speak out of you for a moment. Just let your tongue go and just give voice to what you feel. Hallelujah. Oh. My mother was a wonderful, wonderful apostolic Christian. She was an old-fashioned, no-nonsense Pentecostal. She was. She was gifted in the spirit. She saw things in the spirit. But my mother, she had health problems. One of them was something went wrong with her back. And I didn't live at home. I was off in school and various things. But I stayed in touch with my brother and father. So what happened was um, she, she got so bad that she couldn't sleep at night and she'd keep my father awake. So she'd go upstairs in the room upstairs where I stayed when I came home from the city where I worked. And uh, she was just in pain. She just, it was, it was terrible. She lay there in that bed and she could not get comfortable. She was just in misery. And she just cried out to Jesus. She said, Jesus, please help me to just go to sleep with no pain. She said to me, she told me the story. She said, Lee, all of a sudden, I just laid back on that pillow 
and I fell into a sleep. I was almost asleep, but she said something sat me up in the bed, turned me on my left side, and snapped my back, set me up straight up again, put me on my right side, and snapped my back like an adjustment of some kind. She said, then it, he just laid me back in the bed very gently and left me. And she said, I fell into a deep sleep. And the next morning, she never, ever had another pain. I believe that was an angel of God. I believe that was an angel of God. I was in a restaurant one night and it was at a general conference and we were there, a couple of us, and um, the waitress came over and she said, um, she had three menus and she said, uh, are you ready to order? I said. Yes, she said, well, there's someone else, was well, someone else seated here, we sat down with you. And I said, no, there was only two of us. She said, no, there was someone else that sat down with you. I don't know about you, but that's the most comforting thing in the entire world. That to me, that's the most comforting thing in the entire world. It was an angel of God. <laughs> Do it for a moment, just worship. I want you people to have these experiences. I want you to get involved with this type of thing. Mm. I was in Columbus, Ohio doing a meeting. I was on the aisle over here next to the wall. There was a man who walked in. The place was filled, but there was an empty seat about three rows behind me on the aisle. This man walked in. He just stepped into the seat behind me and was healed instantaneously. People, it's not because I am who I am. It's because he is who he is. And I'm just a channel. I'm just a vessel for him to flow through. But you've got to be a vessel. You've got to be willing. <laughs> Brother Art Wilson, he pastors the church in Romulus, Michigan. I was there a few years ago. I preach annually for them. He and I worked at the UN together. But it's interesting. <clears throat> He had a young man in the church at a move of God that I think was Sunday morning, actually. And uh, this young man was in the audience, and there were a lot of people, and I don't know all these people, of course. But as I was praying, this young man grabbed me. He was about 19 years old. He was sort of stocky, wore glasses. He said, well, Stone King, he said, please, please pray for my head. He said, I don't, I can't think. I can't get my, my brain to work the way it's supposed to work. I found out later he had a severe case of autism. He was extremely autistic. I didn't know that. I didn't know him from anyone. But in my way of doing things, I put one hand on one side of his head and this hand on the other side, and I prayed because I feel that when I do that, the Holy Ghost goes back and forth between my hands. That's why if I pray for men, in particular, I'll put a hand on the back and a hand on the chest because I believe the Holy Ghost goes back and forth between those hands and whatever's in between those hands can be taken out. I prayed for him and I turned 
I pray, all I prayed was, Lord Jesus, help his brain to be normal. Help his brain to be able to understand and think the way he wants to think. Something simple like that. And I turned because someone was pulling me to go another direction to pray for someone else. And when I turned, his mother, the woman behind him, this boy I prayed for, I didn't know who she was, but it was his mother. She, she cried out. She grabbed me. She said, Brother Strong King, no. Turn around. Look. The boy was talking normally. His voice was normal. The words were normal. She was standing there. Tears running down her face. She said, Brother Stone King, he's never talked like this. He's never been like this. He was miraculously healed. I've seen other cases like that since. But there was a young man over here. His name was Mark. I didn't know at that time. But he was, um, he had multiple sclerosis. And he was... He was crippled, but he loved God. And that kid would dance and shout, usually over here among the young people. And there were several young people there. But he was awkward when he danced before God because he didn't have control of his legs, his feet, and his arms. He would do strange things. So the kids, knowing that, they would keep distance from him so they didn't get hit. He didn't hit them. And he would just go at it. And he was very awkward to watch, okay? <laughs> so he was standing over here well I went over there and began to pray for people down that, uh, that wall and I happened to look up and look in his face and I could tell by looking at his countenance he wanted me to pray for him and this boy's feet were pigeon toed like this he had a terrible time walking he was pigeon toed and so I went back to him and I said to him do you want me to pray for you? He said, Brother Strong King, please pray for me. And here he's standing like this. And I prayed the prayer that I felt to pray for him in Jesus' name. He had just seen this miracle. And so I prayed. When I opened my eyes and looked down, his feet went like that. And he took off running. He was miraculously healed just like that miraculously healed, totally healed. I just saw him recently. I ran up and grabbed him. I hugged him. I said, how you doing, boy? He said, I'm still running. But this is my question. If that boy who was crippled didn't care about how he looked just because he loved Jesus, he didn't care what you thought, made no apologies. He was just going to love Jesus. What's wrong with us who have no crippledness? That's what I'm asking. It brought great, great conviction to me. Go ahead and just let your voice out. Uh, there's revelation here. The Holy Ghost is gently pulling many of you into a different mindset, which is very important in order to get done what he wants done in the last hours. (laughs) 
Oh. The very thing you're looking for is above you right now in the air with your own way of doing things. Reach into that and pull it down for yourself with worship because there's an anointing that's come upon this entire congregation. Angels have drawn near to many of you right now in this auditorium. The Vahato Kesho Lavarako de Kusho Tote Kishata Undota Lavadesho Lotate Kishata Kashata Kataka Undota Lavarisho Lavaraka I wonder what would happen if just every man, every woman, no matter if you're standing or seated, just would lift both hands in the air and just begin to worship God for just a moment in time. Don't be afraid. There's a great ministry in the spirit. There are impartations going on right now from the Holy Ghost to young people and old alike. There's strength coming to those who are weary. There's strength coming into your body. Virtue is being replaced in many bodies here tonight. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, shut Shot of Toka Shataki Shataka Undata Shataya Undahato Koshoto Toka Shoto Teki Undoto Lavaresho Tota Kadesha Lavaraka Tekisha and the Lavaresha Taka Shataki Shataka Taka. That's it, son. That's it. That's it. It's on you. It's on you right there. Hantalavaraka shataya. Hotoka shatata kadesh shataya varaka. 
Pogdota na varešo lota, rava derešo tajo. Pogdota na varešo lota, rava rako šo tajo. varako te ki šato, te ki šata kaha. Pogdota toho šo tato kariša. With the anointing that is on you right now, whatever you feel led to do, I want you to do it. We have time for this. It's Saturday night. We have time. Whatever you feel like doing, just do it right now. It may be you feel like praying for someone. You may want to do, uh, pray for yourself. But whatever you feel to do for the moment, just do it. Because there are people being healed right now what you may not understand is that when you came through the doors of this sanctuary, you walked into the most powerful radiation room on planet Earth. While you're there, the rays of the Holy Ghost can shine through your clothes. It can burn out cancer cells. It can remove tumors. It can take away disease. It can heal of all manner of diseases. That that atmosphere is here for that right now. You don't have to feel anything. When they give you radiation, you don't feel anything. It's just rays. You don't have to feel some big something, but the rays of the Holy Ghost are shining down here tonight to heal you of whatever the problem is in the name of Jesus. If I'm talking to you, if you feel like you're a candidate for what I have just explained, throw your voice in the air, throw your hands in the air and just receive it. In other words, don't beg, just thank him. Don't beg just thank him and just worship him for it and let your voice out because if you do you'll never be the same you're never going to be the same after this That's it. You can let your voice out. There's no one here but us. And you here tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm. There are some people here tonight that you have a heart condition. <clears throat> if I'm talking to you, if the Holy Ghost is moving on you, if you will lift both hands right now, begin to worship God, that thing will totally lift from you and you'll never have a heart attack. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, don't be afraid. <laughs> the gift of faith is in this house here tonight and where the gift of faith is anything 
and all things happen and can happen. So tonight, whatever your real need is, whether it be physical or mental, if you would just throw both hands in the air and one more time begin to worship God, you will be healed and delivered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Let your voice out. Lord Jesus, all manner of disease, I command to leave the bodies of these people. I command all manner of sickness to leave the bodies of these people. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the authority of the word of God, by the power of the name of Jesus, I cover us now with the name of Jesus. I cover us with the blood of Jesus. By your stripes we are healed. Oh, blessed be the name of the Holy One, even the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you have been healed or delivered here tonight, and I can keep on preaching, but I don't feel to, but if you've been healed or delivered here tonight, I want you to walk from where you are. I want you to run from where you are, however you want to do it. But I want you to come to this altar and just throw your hands in the air and thank God for what he's done for you here tonight. Because there are numerous things that have taken places, taken place among the people of God. Ugh. If you are here tonight, a woman just received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. People, Jesus is in this house. He's in this house. Anything is possible and it's happening. It's happening in the name of Jesus. For those of you who want to rejoice with these who have been blessed and healed and delivered tonight, why don't you just come down front and why don't we just rejoice and worship the God, the, this God whose name is Jesus here tonight. Just let your voice out in the name of Jesus. I thank God. I thank God. God for what he's doing here tonight. The angels of the Lord are in this place. The sanctuary, this sanctuary in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the word of God, by the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the glory of God. That's it. Keep on coming. Something is happening when you move. Something is happening in the spirit when you move. Because if you confess him before men, he will confess you before his father which is in heaven. And again tonight, I challenge every one of you that is here, reach out to someone, get a hold of someone with the anointing that is on you and just begin to pray for them for healing, healing. The Bible says, pray one for another that you may be healed. Healed of what? Healed of everything, healed of anything. There's power among you people. There's power upon you people here tonight in the name of Jesus. And it's flowing through you. Something happened.
apostolic is born anew and afresh here tonight among us by the authority of the word, by the authority and the power of the word. Handle of a dash of a rack of shit.